the same shirt. No. <laughs> That's awesome. So Kevin <laughs> bought me this shirt. My husband bought me this shirt for my birthday, the Passion Flicks wine. Um, I guess like Passion Flicks corkscrew, and then also the Emerson yeah. Mass t shirt. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna wear that one, then I was like, oh, I'll wear this one. And now we're twins. Oh my god. It looks like it looks like we like both like I looks like I like worked on the movie. <laughs> but I'm like really I just I love, love the shirt. So my <laughs> first question for you is I know we touched on this like during our last interview, but with parts one, two, and three, how chronologically did you film them? I know that scenes have to be kind of shot, you know, all kind of all over the place here and there. But as I was yeah. watching part two, I'm just wondering how, how much you did chronologically for all three parts. Because like, I know as an actor that does kind of help with performance, but as a director and with the crew, you, can, you can't film chronologically for everything. So I was just curious about your thoughts on that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's always the preference to shoot chronologically if you can, but it's um, it's very difficult and very costly and everyone has to move from room to room to room. So the, the good thing about Gabriel's Inferno is because we shot on a stage, we had basically two stage locations and then we had some practical locations. And the stage locations were the university was one stage, um, which we built. And then the um, her home and his home were the other stage. Um, and so <clears throat> we, we, we shot out the university first and then we shot out um, all the home stuff. So, uh, you know, anything that takes place in the home, we shot pretty chronologically, but we shot all the seminar stuff um, actually in the second week. The first week we actually shot all of the Clark stuff that's only going to show up in um, part three. Okay, so how far are you into editing and finishing part three? Are you like 80% done at this point? Yeah, so we've locked picture, which means okay. um, to all the editing, the physical picture editing is done. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so now we've just started on sound and music and the music in part three is significantly more than in any of the other parts. And, and we have a lot of original music and a lot of great songs that, um, well, actually, we, we managed to get Matthew Barber again and um, Tom Roberts and Bessie Mamucho and all these great songs. And so now we're working on that for part three. And, um, you know, with an extra 10 or 15 minutes worth of music, it just takes a little longer for us to make it that much perf more perfect. Yeah. Um, so it'll take a little while, but I I'm hoping a couple of months. Um, especially with everyone in still in isolation and, and uh, things going on, people are working on their own. So it can be um, a little tricky to, to, to try and get musicians together in a room and various things like that to perform. Yeah, um, no, that totally makes sense. So I know we touched on Twilight. I, you know, I'm, I am a huge yeah. Twilight fan. Um, <laughs> um, I know that there was so many things that in part one that was kind of like a little ode to Twilight, like the apples and the orchard. Um, but especially in part two, I even noticed more um, Julia's purple wardrobe and purple things she has, you know, just all over her apartment and, you know, the purple she wears purple a lot and I love it when a director chooses a color scheme for a specific character um, and I'm honestly just curious I know like in Twilight Bella's whole bedroom was purple and she had a lot of like purple undertones for her character is it is it a Twilight reference or is that something that you guys just really wanted to do for Julia's character in the films it's, it's in the book it's, yeah okay. I, I <laughs> from the book so you know there there are some subtleties that we can that we can move on and um but for the most part if she's wearing if she has a lavender uh, bedspread then we have a lavender bedspread and um so we try very hard to just just replicate yeah exactly what you're reading in the book yeah, yeah. no so, i think that i mean it makes sense with you know with with the books i'm just curious if that was like a conversation that 
you know, maybe you and SR had as well in regards to, okay, yes, it's in the book, but I guess I'm just curious, since I'm not talking with SR, um, you know, if that was like kind of like a Twilight type reference as well, because I know in the books for Twilight, the purple wasn't really referenced like it is um, in SR's trilogy here, but it just really, really just like screams like that, that like kind of like Twilight okay. that Bella had and also that Julia has, which also are, you know, very similar characters yeah we do use a lot of I mean when I'm when I'm making the movie I actually use a lot of um still references from Twilight in order to show my DP my costumes different people what we're doing and it's actually quite, quite funny I'll show you I can send you a bunch of the stills but I basically just <laughs> just take screenshots and different stills from the movies um and I say you know this is our reference this is our guide this is what we want to go for but when it comes to color palette I'm very color sensitive and so it's very important to me that my characters have a color that represents them and then we will um we will slightly iterate on the strength of that color depending on the mood that she's in or he's in okay. so um so for the most part, we have this soft lavender, but then we get, you know, when we're, when she returns to school, she's in the blue yeah. and the red, and it's very specific. It's very um, strong. And then she can, you know, soften down to the, um, the softer colors again, but then, you know, she comes out with strength colors every now and then, but still in the same palette. Um, while we're talking about, you know, Melanie and the character of Julia, I love Melanie's natural makeup look in the films. And I'm wondering what type of conversation was that like, you know, with Melanie, with the makeup department, you know, with costuming as well, because Melanie's so beautiful, obviously, like she doesn't need really any makeup. But I also like how you didn't layer anything on her to make it again, just like the book. What was the conversation like with Melanie? And did Melanie have any input on her like natural makeup look as well? Absolutely, you have to work very closely with the actors to make sure that they're comfortable. Um, Melanie's an incredible actress. She's she's also um, very trusting with me. So she's like, if I like it, then um, she, she seems to be pretty happy. Um, I am uh, very, very strict on makeup and hair. I don't want to see makeup. I don't want to be able to see it. And I certainly don't want to be able to see it on um, Julia's face. I think that makeup is a beautiful enhancer that we can all use, but somebody like Julia who is, represents uh, innocence and natural beauty, we want to just use makeup to enhance her her natural features. And so what we would do is we, we, did, we did makeup and um, camera tests and we would actually just zoom in onto her face and see how much makeup we can see. And if I can see the makeup, I would send her back. And I was like, I just don't want to see it. So just so send her back. Don't want to see it, but I need to, I need it to be there, but I just don't want to see it. So it was constantly going back and forth to try and make sure we didn't see it. And especially because you're shooting digitally, right? And it's like in yeah. HD, it's like you can fully see makeup. It's like when you watch an older movie that's now a Blu-ray and the yeah. actor's makeup, you know, from like the 80s or 90s, you can really see it in HD. So I feel like it's, yeah. especially since you're shooting digitally, yeah. you have to like make sure. Um, so there is a part in the movie where Julia tells Gabriel's character, she's like, I can't tell if you're going to say something sweet or say something, you know, that's going to completely break my heart and as the audience I feel like that's really a major theme of Gabriel's character and it's also kind of what the audience is sensing when we see him on screen so for that moment I know again you know it's it's all in the book as well but it's also just like the major theme of the movie so how important was it like in the sense of do you, did you do you want the audience to feel that way as well like we don't really like the unpredictability of his character Yes, but I also think that Gabriel is trying really hard, and um, and so you know we're we're kind of a little bit on his side. We're like, come on, you can do this, you can do this. But the fact that she is now so able to to voice that concern shows that he is trying, and that she feels a little bit more comfortable in it. For me, the fact that a woman can actually acknowledge their concern openly in a situation so that um, the, um, you know, so that the, her male counterpart um, can respond 
um, without you know throwing a temper tantrum or running out of the room. She has she has she has a lot of comfort in actually being able to respond. Uh, to, sorry, she has a lot of comfort in actually being able to voice her concern. Yeah. Um, and that's what I like about that particular scene because it it um, it it starts the dialogue, and that's important. It's important to communicate. Um, yeah, no, that was one of my one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um, is are there any Easter egg? you know, homages in the movie to maybe other movies or other things in books that you've liked. I mean, again, without giving too much away, there is a scene where, you know, Gabriel Julio's coming through the window and I automatically think of Scream <laughs> when I see like an actor come through the window to see like their, you know, girlfriend, loved one. And I don't, I'm assuming it wasn't like a screen homage, but is there anything in the, in the movie in part two that was kind of like a little Easter egg to other, you know, films that, and things that you've liked in the past? You know, I can't think of anything right now, nothing intentional. So, I mean, I think we're all influenced by everything that we watch. So um, probably people will point it out and go, hey, that's something just like that other movie. And I'll be like, my God, it really is. But there was nothing intentional. Got it. Um, I, I really try to focus on exactly how I pictured every scene in the book. So I, I would just envision, I'd read the scene in the book and then I would envision it and I would try and film exactly what I saw when I read the story. Well, I think that's one of the best things about movies like this is that, you know, it is based off of books. So obviously all of us book readers know the story, but people who are fans of certain things, like my favorite horror film of all time is Scream. It just like made me immediately think of that. Um, so there is a gorgeous montage of Gabriel and Julia, like in, in the, in the film, it's, it's like a little montage, not, not super, super long where, you know, they're reading books and just being really sweet with each other. I don't want to give anything away. When you're filming those scenes with Melanie and Julio, are you, are you saying in your head, like, you know, this is going to be part of like, you know, a montage that we're going to include, you know, in this part in the film. And as a director, when I'm always watching montages, you know, of a romantic couple, of a friendship, as a director, do you know that you are shooting a montage and how you're going to edit it together as you're shooting it? Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. So when I get a script and it says montage, <laughs> I'm actually more... I'm more concerned. I think you froze. You there? I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm here. <laughs> um, so when, when I get a script and I see montage, it's actually more concerning for me because a montage is, you know, they sit on the couch and drink a cup of coffee. He takes photos of her. Uh, they lie in bed. They, they do this. They do that. And every single time you have one line like that, it's an entirely new scene, whole new location. It, it's a big move to do something like that. So I have to plot them out very carefully and they have to plot out with the clothes, the actions, how we're gonna stage it um, and how we're able to do it within a, a relatively quick time frame and tell a little story with one shot. So we wanna be able to get their relationship across without doing too many things. So we have, you know, the the photography scene, we have the sipping coffee and reading book scene, but yeah. you can tell so much about their relationship as just from seeing them um, move in that one frame. Um, and that's what I like about them. So they're, they're very much so plotted out. Yeah, um, I think that you froze a little bit here, but let me is let me see if I can get you. Um, it's I'm in Montana, so I have uh, the excellent um, rural Montana internet. No, you're fine. No, I can totally hear you. It's just the camera's a little jittery. But no, I I I just have my husband and I were talking about it after I watched part two, and we were like, we always like to see here when directors are filming montages and how and how they do it. Um, yeah. so <laughs> one more thing to add on to that montage, both Julia. Uh, both Julio and Melanie work with me very closely on those because I sit with them and I go, here's what we need to do. We want to convey your your relationship growing. What can you do to work with me within this one frame? How do you think we can portray this? And so their their contribution to those scenes is is vital. And they, I mean, they're so wonderful to work with. So it was kind of easy for us to come up with something to, get to make that one frame work. 
By the way, I, I love it when two actors really just are so like giving and like praiseful of each other. And I feel like Melanie and Julio are just in like every single interview, in the interview I did with them, the interviews I've seen, um, you know, it doesn't happen like a whole lot to that extent, but I just love how much I like and respect they have for each other. Um, and their friendship is just like so cute to see. Um, there's also a scene in part two where I really loved where Gabriel is taking pictures of Julia. Is, is that, was, are, where are those photos? Was, is he actually <laughs> taking photos of her? And are, like, are there actually photos of Melanie or was that kind of just done for the filmmaking? <laughs> Well, um, if you know part three, he gives her photos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are some of the photos. Okay. But, um, yeah. He, and, and also, Julio is a great photographer. So um, he was really excited about that particular performance. So that's what I was yes, wondering. You'll see some photos of her. I was wondering if Julio was actually taking the photos during that scene and if like those photos are actually going to show up in part three. So I guess the answer is yes. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I really want to talk about Professor Singer, AKA Professor Payne. I loved her debut yeah. here, literally yeah. just like the book. Um, talk to me about casting that actress. Um, I'm not, is her, to pronounce her name, is it Haviland? Haviland, yeah. Haviland. Haviland. Okay, so she was amazing. I loved her outfits, loved her red lipstick, red nail polish. Um, and even in her, her, you know, short screen time that she has, it's a very, very memorable character that I definitely want to see more of. So I'm curious when you were shooting, um, you know, that bathroom scene with her and Melanie, how many times did you shoot that? And did she give, did she just get it right away? Because it's just an amazing performance. Yeah, she ate the screen up. She was great. So there's a, there's a perfect example of us shooting um, sequentially. So we actually shot the seminar scene. And then that the second half of the day, that evening, we shot the um, restaurant scene and then the bathroom scene. So we shot it all back to back, which was a really great opportunity for us. Um, and uh, I mean, the second that she walked on in that red jacket and just grabbed um emerson for the, the 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 kiss on the cheek it was i was like well we're gonna have a great day this is gonna be so easy um, and uh, and she just she just relished in it and that was just exactly what we needed for that role you know we wanted her to have all the power and just just take it you know what i mean and so um and she did and she did she nailed it we we actually didn't have to shoot that much with her um because she um you know, we went into that bathroom scene, we shot it, you know, bath shooting in bathrooms is hard, it's very small. Yeah. So, um, so we got this great, this, you know, the great use of the mirror for us to be able to mm. film her. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we did it in, I think we shot that in an hour. I mean, it was not very long. Yeah, um, shooting with mirrors is tough. It. Yeah. It is. <laughs> we have to <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I said. Like, I, I loved the mirror scene and I thought like the cinematography was just so beautiful. Um, so I know that you've got, you've released like a couple of behind the scenes things, you know, on Passion Flicks account, on your account, you know, throughout the last couple of months. And there's a scene where you're, you know, cracking up at something that maybe Julio did or Melanie did. So uh, honestly, how often does that happen for you as a director on set? I know in that scene, you're yeah. kind of cracking up. But again, like in a love story that this beautiful I'm sure you just kind of get as a fan as well of the books you kind of just get lost in the moment with watching them as well yeah. so I guess I'm curious like how often are you cracking up on set and how often are you just getting like completely lost and like maybe even you're like forgetting you're a director at times because their chemistry is so good <laughs> yeah it really is you know uh, I would say 90% of the time I'm getting lost in what they're doing <laughs> so which is fantastic so yeah. I you know even and if, if you can see how we cut it together, we spend so much time actually just on them, just keeping still. We don't try and cut to different things or cut away from them because, you know, I'm very fortunate. We have so much incredible footage with the two of them that we were able to just live uh, on the screen with them and, and watch their performance. Um, 
But that particular scene, I, I actually don't crack up that often. Um, <laughs> I don't crack up that often because it, it does distract everyone from, from the scene. It's hard, it's hard to do something serious when you crack up. And I'm normally just so into it. I'm just like, this is so important. This is so important. Sometimes maybe when Kristen Peterson comes onto the screen, I, I crack up. But um, <laughs> but um, when, uh, no, that scene, that was the chocolate cake scene. and. Oh. Um, so, so while we were doing it, so when we started the day, the whole, um, the whole um, conversation about the Eucharist was actually not in the screenplay. And Julia and, and, uh, and uh, Melanie and Julio yeah. <laughs> came to me in the morning, we need a little bit more to this scene. It feels like, um, it feels like we're missing something and I'm not sure how to get from this point A to point B. And I said, oh, well, this is actually this, beautiful um, story and, and poetry that um, that Gabriel shares with Melanie. Um, sorry, Gabriel shares with Julia. My goodness, yeah. it's very hard. I know. <laughs> like I know. Some, well, um, simply because and, it's, it's uh, Julio. Like, it's just like Julio, Julia. Like, I, it's, trust me, when yeah. I'm writing notes down, I'm like, wait a minute, no, this is Gabriel. <laughs> so like G and M, but it's also G and J, so it's I, very confusing. It's so confusing. Um, <laughs> so, but, um, and so I read it to them from the book and Julio was like, well, that's great. I want to say all that. And I said, wonderful. Memorize that. We start shooting in 30 minutes. <laughs> and so he memorized this whole, um, th this whole monologue, basically. Um, which is hard, you know, when you consider the fact that he has to do the accent and um, and it's another language for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's impressive. I'll do that in Italian next time. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's the joke. So, um, but then when he was doing it, he did it so well. And his performance when he's like holding out that chocolate cake and he's going, don't you want me to feed you? I mean, all of us, all of the girls are sitting there going, oh, Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh my God. I feel so and excited and I want you to feed me. And so it was more that. And so all of us just got so, it's that, that awkward giddiness of like, I am interrupting this incredibly uh, intimate moment between these two people. I shouldn't be watching. I shouldn't be watching because it's just too delicious. And so that just literally just makes you start laughing. Yeah, when you're in when you're in an uncomfortable position, you actually start laughing. So that yes. was us, and I just couldn't couldn't stop. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the backstory of that because I I wasn't a hundred percent sure what scene you were cracking up on. And yes, when you crack up, it does like it can be distracting. But I was honestly just curious because and now now I'm thinking if I was there too, and if I was there with all the girls, I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> well, everybody was like. Everybody, Ali was there and, and she was taking videos of everyone, like the hair and makeup people were cracking up. Everyone was just like, oh my God, I, I can't believe he's, he's pulling this off so <laughs> incredibly that we're just like, this is gloriously uncomfortable. <laughs> now, um, again, I know we touched base on this, you know, in our last interview, but when you are doing the more intimate scenes with Melanie and Julio, are there less people on set during those that is more of a closed set? And how do you kind of like decide which scenes are going to be a closed set day? And do you do them, you know, is it like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday going to be closed set? Or do you kind of break it up throughout shooting? You break it up. It really comes down to the scene and, and what's going to be shown and the comfort level of the actors, you know, mm -hmm. that's what it comes on. I personally like to have very few people on set in general. So we have pretty yeah. small crews, but I just don't like, I don't like to have people around too much because it's <laughs> distracting. Um, except on days when our founding members come and then we have a big, you know, that it's a big event. But um, otherwise, for the most part, I just like to have very few people on set. And then uh, if something's intimate, generally speaking, it's not it's not necessarily a, a kiss or anything like that it's more of something's going to show like if a, a dress is going to hike up or a um or you know we, we're going to feel something then you, you want to give the actors the comfort of you know of having no one else watching um because otherwise they become it's just it's just unpleasant so it's it's really something a conversation to have with the actors whoever they want to be on the set they can they'll, they'll be on the session if they don't want anyone there, then it's gone. They're gone. It's as simple as uh, yeah. that. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, so I, I love the scene and I know a part was in uh, the trailer when she's in the purple dress with her heels and like hiking her leg up and they're kissing. It's just, yes. it's, it's like so good. <laughs> there it's, uh, I'm like, I literally can't wait to see fan reactions for that. I know. <laughs> Coming out this week, it's like, it, it, you know, it, it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey and for it to actually come out this week, I'm like, wow, it's, it's like this bit of a whirlwind. So now that, I mean, you know, these films have been released during, you know, the world we're living in now, like coronavirus time. So, and I know that that wasn't, you know, I, I mean, nothing about coronavirus has been ideal for anyone, obviously, but, you know, the films are always going to be coming out on Passion Flicks, which is a streaming platform. So it ends up, you know, kind of working out in, you know, the same way you were going to be planning it anyway, but were the, you know, release dates or anything like that, you know, kind of messed with because of COVID. I'm just interested for you, like with you and your crew, like how you're gonna be yeah. planning everything out and then COVID happened um, and then how you kind of, you know, planned out the, the release date and do you have a release date for part three yet or you don't really know yet? Um, so on the last part, I don't really know. It'll be this year and it'll be yeah. before the holidays, but um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have an actual release date yet. We want the um, sound and we just handed over to sound and music. So we want to give them the, the, the um, ability to, to really assess the work before we can say, okay, now we know when we're going to release. Um, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we were supposed to, in an ideal world, we would have rocked picture on Gabriel's Inferno um, at the end of March or, or April, um, still not have been able to release it because it's five and a half hours. So when something, when it's a five and a half hour movie, post-production is going to take just as long. The main difference with us is that um, we didn't necessarily know we were going to break it up into three parts, um, but the movie ended up being five and a half hours long. So it, you know, the option is to hold off on everything, you know, the, do the Netflix model, hold off on everything, do all the post-production and, and release the movie, you know, at the end of the year, which I think I probably would have been hunted down and killed I think if I'd done that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it, it just it worked out really well and I think especially now during during this time on our planet um, mm -hmm. during COVID um, being able to release Gabriel's Inferno which is so beautiful and gives us hope um, it, during this time is actually just such a blessing I think is the right word. I'm so grateful that we have all this footage and that we're able to finish it and that we're able to release it during a time when people need it um, and can really take the time to enjoy it. So in that way, it's great for us. But, you know, at this point, I was supposed to have finished Wicked <gasps> and Fueled and Crashed and Rapture and I was starting This Man and we were supposed to finish Resisting Roots and we were starting A Man's Promise. I mean, that's what our schedule was this year. So right now, it's July, I was supposed to be um, filming this man. So it's not happening. <laughs> I'm so, I'm still like, I'm waiting for all my fueled info. I'm like, who's the actor? When is it, when is it gonna be shot? What, do you have any idea when you might reveal who the actor's gonna be? Or is it gonna kind of be when you guys first start filming? No, we'll re we'll reveal him. Um, you know, it's just it, it, Los Angeles is in a is sort of shut down again. So and Fuel and Crash take place in Los Angeles. So yeah, I can't get people. I can't get people around close enough to the actor to actually film anything. And we really want to do it. Um, I have this really fun, sassy way of doing it. So I don't want to. I don't want to take away from yeah. the excitement of the reveal. Um, just just so that we can make an announcement yeah. and um but everyone's on board everyone's you know ready to go and uh so you know i actually see olivia this weekend i'm excited to hang out with her we're going to discuss the script and um and you know and and so really it's just a it's a matter of when we're allowed to get together there's um if it's up to ali it would be next week so <laughs> it's, it's really just a matter of um it's just, it's just a matter of me being able to get a team of people in the same outdoor area that I have the actor, that's it.
Yeah, and good point about it being an LA based story, obviously, with like Santa Monica and everything. You can't just like be filming there right now. <laughs> well, Tosca, I, I don't want to go anywhere with it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just have like a couple more um, questions left. So honestly, when I'm when I'm watching a movie like you know, Gabriel's Inferno parts one and two, especially more so in part two, where you just really let the scenes breathe. And we're just seeing the characters, you know, kiss for a couple of minutes. This is not something that we get in other movies. Like in other movies, it's like the movie kiss, maybe a little mini makeout session, and then like a sex scene. Like this, we actually really get to see their involvement. So for you, like, why? are more movies not made like this? Like what you're doing? Like, I'm just like, my like, friends and I, when we watch something like this after we've read the book, we just want to see the characters do exactly what they're doing. And it looks to me, you know, like Anna Todd's sequel after we collided is going to be much more along the book lines than, you know, the first mm -hmm. film was, which is amazing. But like how, it, how, why is it so important to you to just let the scenes breathe? And why don't you think we get scenes like this in other like major motion pictures like I legitimately don't understand because this is the stuff that us like you know audiences want and we don't get it a lot of the time yeah I think for the most part there are time restrictions on other movies yeah I don't have time restrictions so I can um you know I can have them kiss as long as possible and I always <laughs> I the, the, the funny thing is is that Margie who's our uh, my editor and also the head of post-production at, at Passion Flicks She'll, she'll be like, oh, well, Tosca filmed them kissing this way, and then she filmed them kissing this way, and then she filmed them <laughs> kissing this way. So she want to show all that kissing. I'm like, I do. I do. I absolutely do. 100%. Um, and so we have these beautiful long kissing scenes. But, you know, as a woman, I'm so drawn in by a kiss. I think kissing is just the most beautiful, intimate thing. So I want to see my characters who are falling in love kiss. It's so gorgeous. And one of the things that I say to my actors, I say this on all of the movies, um, but I said, anytime, if you're, as our relationship's building, um, if you're nervous at any time, just kiss, just kiss and it'll be fine. And then, so like, even if we're doing an intimate scene, if we're doing a sex scene and I'm like, and you're, you're unsure what to do, you're like, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put my hand here or there, just kiss just kiss and then come back to it. And then I'll, then I'll give you an instruction. And then, um, and so they just always kiss and it's so beautiful. So I'm a big fan of kissing. That's one of so, my favorite answers. Well. That's one of my favorite answers you've ever given me. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay. Um, so last question for you, um, you know, Getting back to, I, I don't know exactly how much you've maybe, you know, filmed of, of book two yet and how much you can go into that, but what is your, all of the project you, you projects you've worked on um, are including actors, you know, kissing and being very intimate together. So what does the process look like, you know, for, to, to film book two and I guess, I mean, I mean, specifically for Gabriel's Inferno, like what is, do you have any idea of the process of like what you're going to do post COVID in regards to filming the rest of the books? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're you know, keeping our eyes on, on the situation daily, but um, for, for Rapture, what we've done is we've shot everything that takes place in Toronto. So if you know the book Rapture, everything that takes place in Toronto, we've shot. What we haven't shot is everything that takes place in Italy because we couldn't go to Italy. Um, and, um, and we haven't shot the Massachusetts portion. So, so, so basically we, you know, we've shot his, his apartments and, and her place and, and them getting together. And, and of course we've shot the most incredible ending of the relationship scene that you've ever seen it was so powerful I was you were talking about like is there a moment when I'm just like tracked into it you like tracked watching them or or if I'm still a director and I was like I, I was a hundred percent audience member and just watching Melanie poke Gabriel in the chest and saying you were supposed to do this together we were supposed to do this together and I was I'm mean, talking about Raptor now but oh. I mean it was just so powerful and I just started crying while she was performing and I was like okay that's it <laughs> I need to make a comedy that's what I said I was like <laughs> I need to make a comedy. 
I can't, I can't do this. It's so, it was so heartbreaking. So while we love Gabriel's Inferno and everything's going to be incredible about this movie, and I can't wait for you to see part two and part three, Rapture is, is going to be, it's going to blow you out of the water. There's so much, it's just great. Melanie's character arc in this, and even in part two as Julia, I mean, like, because, like, just seeing her character arc from part one to part two is just so beautiful and gradual, and to see her get feisty, that's, like, my favorite, that's, like, my favorite Melanie on screen, honestly. Like, yeah. she's just so great. Um, but, no, I cannot wait for the fans to see part two. It's so good. Um, I just, again, like, my favorite parts of it are just, like, letting the scenes breathe and literally just listening to the dialogue of both Gabriel and Julia as the scenes, you know, unfold. It's, I just yeah. can't wait for people to see it, honestly. Thank you. Yeah, they're, they're wonderful actors. I can't wait to work with them again. So glad we're all, like, lifelong friends now. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tosca. I appreciate it.